Welcome to this brief introduction video to GL Studio. In this video, we will see how to build the Attitude Directional Indicator Ball as seen in the GL Studio 5 completed cockpit tutorial project. This comprehensive tutorial includes developing a multifunction display panel, importing a transforming 3D cockpit shell from 3D Studio Max, a simple 3D map navigation scheme, and standby instruments including an altimeter and the attitude directional indicator we are about to construct. In its simplest form, GL Studio is a code generator. As such, we will need a compiler to build our projects. Since we are using Microsoft Windows in this example, we will use Visual Studio as our compiler. GL Studio includes a Visual Studio application wizard in order to quickly and easily set up a project framework. This wizard generates the source files, the solution, and the project that will serve as a starting point for the design. The starter project is not much to look at, it's just a couple of squares. Double-clicking the GL Studio Design file launches the GL Studio Designer so we can begin to customize the starter project. The designer consists of all the tools, hierarchy controls, 3D layout canvases, and a host of other features and functions to lay out and configure any robust user interface. Users have full control over the layout of the panels within GL Studio. This yields a fully customizable working environment for single or multiple screen configurations. The drawing canvas functions similar to other popular illustration tools with the ability to arrange content on the canvas, group content, create new content, and it also allows you to work in a true 3D framework. Let's clear the canvas of the wizard generated content and start by laying out the foundation of our ADI with the sphere tool found in the toolbox. Every GL Studio object has a set of properties we can adjust to completely customize the object's appearance. To smooth out the sphere, we can increase the number of stacks and slices. All of these properties are available at runtime, so you can update any of them while the finished application is in use. Next, we will apply a texture to the sphere that contains the artificial horizon colors and pitch indicator marks for the instrument. The texture file comes from the tutorial, so we will browse to the containing folder and select it. GL Studio supports a wide variety of industry common texture file formats. With the texture loaded into the palette, we will select it and apply it to our sphere. Since the texture is sideways, let's use the geometry manipulation tools to rotate the sphere 90 degrees. Each GL Studio object also has its own dynamic coordinate system that can be controlled at runtime. In this case, we want the sphere to stay aligned with the world coordinate system after rotating, so we will set it back. Our next step is to apply lighting to the sphere to enhance its 3D appearance. The object properties available in GL Studio include all common graphical drawing effects, including texture modulation, garo shading, lighting, and polygon drawing modes. Now with lighting enabled, the sphere turns black because we don't have a light source in the scene yet. Back in the toolbox, we will select a light source and drop it into the scene. At this point, the geometry accurately reflects how we want the interface to look. In the designer, we generate the C++ code for the project and then go back to the compiler to build and run the new design. This concludes the first phase of the user interface development, creating geometry. Now it is time to add some behaviors and get the sphere to pitch and roll. Back in the designer, we will change the auto-generated name for the GL Studio sphere to better represent the object's function. 
We will also change the workspace layout to a coding view. This layout is useful for maximizing the code editor and code browser canvases. For this attitude directional indicator, there are two main properties we will want to control at runtime, pitch and roll. We will create those two class properties, and while we're at it, we'll make a third property to control testing values. In the code editor for the properties, we can add comments for what this class properties function is. In this case, we are controlling the role of the attitude directional indicator. The property is type float. Its name is role, and we will initialize its value at 0.0. .0. We will do the same thing for the pitch class property. Now let's code up the setter method for role. First we will initialize the role property. Then we will specify the pointer to the ADI sphere. At this point the designer will populate a list of GL Studio API calls that are available for this object. In this instance, we want the sphere to dynamically rotate at runtime. As we type, the list automatically filters to show a subset of the API calls. Here we will select the dynamic rotate function, with the tooltip showing us that the function expects arguments for the role value and the enumeration for the axis of rotation. We will include the role value, and the rotation axis for role is coming out of the screen so that will be around the Z axis. This behavior is very similar for the pitch property, so we will copy and paste and update the rotation axis to be about the X axis. The final property that we will configure will be one to control testing values. This is useful for when users need to test user interface functionality without it being connected to a data stream. This flag for testing can be turned on and off as needed at runtime without having to rebuild the entire application. At this point, we can build and run our project, but since we are not connected to any data values, we wouldn't see any motion. Let's use that testing flag to drive pitch and roll values to the aptitude directional indicator. This is where the class methods come into play. The initialize class is used for code that is called once at startup, and calculate is used for code that is called every frame. This is where we will drive pitch and roll. So we will do a testing check, which we know is true because we set it that way, and we will make a call to roll and another call to pitch. To drive the roll and pitch values, we will use a helper function called ramp float. This function ramps values based on the system time on a sine wave from a minimum value to a maximum value. For roll, let's go from negative 40 degrees to positive 40 degrees. And for pitch, let's go from negative 20 degrees to 50 degrees with a little bit of a slower time. This ramping function is in a utility library that comes with GL Studio. So we need to include it in the project. Users can include any of their unique specific code this way. Now when we build and run the project, we can see that the attitude directional indicator sphere is behaving as expected. rolling from negative 40 degrees to positive 40 degrees and pitching a little bit more slowly from negative 20 degrees to positive 50. The last phase in this development process will be to create a component. Up until now, this project has used its own windowing mechanism to do the drawing. Since GL Studio is object-oriented, let's build the design as a component so it can be incorporated into a larger design. 
This is how the object shows up in the GL Studio tutorial cockpit. Back in the designer, we'll change the generation mode from standalone to component. And in Visual Studio, we will select to build an RSO or reusable software object, and then we'll build the DLL. For simplicity's sake, we will use the GL Studio Designer as the windowing element to draw the ADI component. In a new design, we'll select Insert Component from the toolbox, and then browse to and select the file containing the DLL. As soon as it's loaded, we can see that it's behaving as intended, pitching and rolling with our ramping function because the testing flag is on. It's now an asset that we can copy and paste to create multiple instances. Each instance has its own pointer for control. Let's select this instance and look at its property values. We can add a property to track, like the testing flag, and turn it off. Notice it stops moving while the other instances keep going. We can continue manipulating properties, such as roll, and pitch, getting the results we expect when we enter in specific property values. You have now seen the basic principles for how to build a user interface element with GL Studio. We encourage you to request a trial version today so you can delve deeper into building advanced, high-performing 3D user interfaces.